Thank you for staying tuned to Sunrise at Sea right here on CTV. My name is Apollo Sarah and we continue the conversation on the Twitter jabs too. With me in studio is uh, Dr. Rukare Donald and is the president of the Uganda Olympic Committee. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Apollo. How, How are, you, are you? Not too bad. And how are you this early morning? I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be on CTV. All right. Yep. So let's get right into it. But before we start, could you please share with the viewer what the mandate for the Uganda Olympic Committee is? Well, thank you very much, Apple. I was seeing you talking about a number of things in the clip pre preceding this. But the Uganda Olympic Committee, which also doubles as the Commonwealth Games Uganda, yes. is mandated primarily to, one, represent the International Olympic Committee in Uganda and the Commonwealth Games Federation in Uganda. And in that mandate, we promote Olympism, People are more familiar with the Olympic Games. Yes. We prepare teams together with, with uh, a number of counterparts, including the government of Uganda, the National Council of Sports, the national associations and federations. Yes. So we prepare teams to go to the Games. So we have a number of Games in our calendar. We have we've at the top the Olympic Summer and Winter Olympic Games. Yes. We then have the Commonwealth Games. We then have the Islamic uh, games which are not very well known All they're right. going to be taking place this year in turkey All right. we then have the african games which will also be taking place in ghana next year All right. and each of those games has a youth version because right. the youth is kind of like the pipeline for for being able to ensure that we then have a, a, con a continuous flow right. so the U the olympic committee therefore prepares teams for these games but also promotes the values of both the olympic family and the commonwealth family in uganda all right. And what about the World Athletics Championships? Do you have any affiliations to that? We, we are, well, affiliation it may not be the right way to look at it, but what happens is that in sports, we will say what we have um, a number of things. Apollo 1, we have the multiple court sport game. Like the Olympic Games, you have all the sports. All right. I don't know what sport you play. I used to play netball. Wow. So netball is uh, <laughs> one of our key sports in Uganda. Yes. So if you, let's, let's pick up netball. So netball will be part of the Commonwealth Games. Okay. So the Commonwealth Games, you have multiple sports. Like now in Uganda, we are going to be fielding about uh, 11 to 12 different sport disciplines or codes. All right. So that's a multiple or multiple sport code event. Yes. But the athletics that is going on currently in Oregon, where our team is doing very well, and congratulations to... Um, specifically Joshua and Jacob for what they did uh, the other day in the yes. 10,000. That is now a single sport. So that's like the World Cup of football. Okay. So oh, like, okay. Yes. So this is like each sport. I'm from swimming. We've just came back from the, uh, the World Championships. Uganda participated in yes. Budapest. So that is just a single event, a single court event. Right. So what's going on in in Eugene, Oregon, in the U.S. now, is only athletics. All right. And within athletics, there are different disciplines. There's track, like what, where we see our yes. guys running. There's the road. We have the field events like javelin, short put, yes. high jump. So that's what's going on. So one of our members, the Uganda Athletics Federation, is taking part right. in that event. So we are following what they are doing and we support them in that in that regard all right perfect so what are you, how do you feel about uganda's performance at the world athletics championship well right now apple i think as you're showing it yes. uh, that that is that, very that, that is a very special is a, it's a very special race why because uh, barega who came fifth from ethiopia was yes. uh, beat joshua in tokyo mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, there was uh, something going on there, which is very, very special. And therefore, to see, any time you see a Ugandan, the Ugandan flag, the Ugandan colors coming in one, three, is, it's definitely on the flag, as you show it's something that makes you, you get goosebumps. So yes. it's definitely, I was watching this at home the other night, it's something very special. And I think sports in Uganda, as you guys were saying in the, in the, at the start of this program, is on the ascent. Yes, it and is. what we'd like to see is how we can keep supporting it to become even better. All right, so let's talk about that support. So how is it being supported to, you know, ascend to the level that we can now proudly even, because we're still in a place where we're still struggling to tell our children or allowing them to even, you know, take up their sports. True. Not many Ugandans even knew that the World Athletics Championships were taking place until Chapter Gay won the gold medal again. So let's talk about the support. How are we keeping that fire Alive. Well, to keep the fire alive, we, we have to have different calls in the fire. All right. And, and, and there, there are different people or different stakeholders who play different roles. So let's begin at the top of the, of the, 
architecture of sports. Mm -hmm. uh, just like in the media, you have the your Ministry of you know Information Technology ICT, and then yes. you have the you have the IC, the UCC, the Uganda Communications Commission, and then you Broadcasters Association. In in sports, it's quite similar. Yes, we have on the one side the government of Uganda, which All is right. the primary duty bearer for supporting sport, and we thank uh, His Excellency the President and also of the First Lady, who is our primary minister, the principal overall minister. Yes, and then we have the. Uh, Minister of State for Sports, Honorable Hamza Obua. So the ministry, the government of Uganda is the overall, let's say, custodian of sports. And we have something anchored in our constitution of Uganda where every Ugandan, you and me, has a, have a right to take part in sport and recreation. Yes. Then the Ministry of Education and Sport, where we have our senior minister, has the primary responsibility to to move sport from a political perspective. Yes. And under this, that under the Minister of St Education and Sports, the First Lady, we then have the Minister of State for Sports and a Department of Sport in the Ministry. Mm -hmm. So those also are supposed to help with promoting sport at primary school level and all that level. And underneath the Ministry, you then have a regulatory body known as the National Council of Sports. Yes. That is supposed to promote, develop, and control sport in Uganda and support currently about 52 national sports federations. Yes. So that's, that's the primary place now where a lot of the development work is supposed to happen. And uh, below that, then you come to the national associations and national federations, who then actually are the people that have the programs, run different, you know, different, you know, let's say Uganda athletics, Uganda swimming, yes. Uganda f football, uh, FUFA, basketball. So in the Olympic side, we have about 32 okay. sport codes. In Uganda in general, we have 53. Yes. So that is the, the quick architecture. Then on the other side, you have other bodies that support and complement. Yes. That's where the Uganda Olympic Committee comes into All place. Right. You have the National Primary Schools Association, Secondary Schools Association, and the schools also we often forget, play a very cardinal role. Yes, they do. Because if you have a good sporting program in the schools, mm -hmm. we were at Green Hill, for example, in swimming, we had about 15 clubs and over 450 swimmers from Friday to Sunday. Yes. And if you have a very good school program, then you can begin to develop sport. So we need to see sport now cascade family into schools. Yes, exactly. And then that's so it's all these different pieces, if I waste all the jigsaw puzzle up all that, then yes. come together to see what you're seeing in Oregon. So yes. ideally, people like the athletes you're seeing there should have come through from primary school, secondary school, they got the district level, regional level, come up, and then... Finally, you, national you, level. The national level, and then for the national level, maybe you go... Within, within, within Africa, we have zones, and then you have the continental games, and then you, you get to the international stage. All right, perfect. And what about the challenge? What is the biggest challenge? Ah, Apple, there are a number of... <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't call them challenges. I'll challenges. just say... Let's just say a number of... Um, Inconveniences. Uh, you know, let's say competing <laughs> issues. Okay. I, I, don't like, I don't like saying uh, challenges yes. or issues. But I think one is... Um, we have to deal with the issue of mindset. Okay, you that's talked very about important. it. You yes. talked about the issue of, uh, for example, would you allow your daughter or son to engage to, to, to see what Joshua is doing? Those guys train pretty hard. It's it's yes, it's a, probably a full time job, eight yes, hours yes. a day, or you know, quite intensive, and three sixty five days a year to get to what you're seeing. So for most of these people, you see at the world level, the the continental level, Olympics, Commonwealth, they have probably been training for the last eight years. That product you're seeing is not something that happened yesterday. Yeah, it course. began, you know, probably 10 to, to eight, eight to 10 years ago. Yes. And what we're seeing now is the, is the kind is of... The result. Is, is, is the refined product. Yes. So one would be mindset, Apollo. Uh, people, do people, as we were saying in your clip, do we look at sports as a serious enterprise? Or a misanio? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many people say, no, I want my kid, you want fours, you want to hey. go to A-level, O-level, o level, university, yes. get a degree, work, get married, get children. Mm. So sports is not seen as something, for many people, as something as a serious enterprise. Yes. But it is. So mindset is one thing. The other one is to have ensure that you have a development program that is anchored in that and supported financially. Yes. Because within the sporting system that we have, we have like three broad pathways or three broad stages. The first one is identification. Do you have a talent identification program? This needs funding. Oh, wow. So you begin yes. by identification. How do you identify the talent? Once you've identified the talent, 
then how do you prepare this talent? That's where you know you go through the coaching, the nutrition, the mentor, the participation in different games. So you have to you know prepare this talent. Yes. And then the third phase is the actual participation in the games. Yes. Now for a long time and it has improved, sport has been focusing on the third phase, participation. Get the teams together, buy the tickets. In fact, some people say we're glorified travel agents. You just buy the tickets, <laughs> get them the kit, and then they go. Yeah. yeah. But it's about these three stages. And yes. There's even more now later on if, when you're now talking about like the Joshuas, yes. where now they're even training to win, training to compete, not just to going to present themselves, but the mental side of it, the, the nutrition side, the science. Yes. There are many other aspects, but three broad categories, identification, you know, preparation and participation. Yes. And along that whole value chain, we need to get support. And support can come primarily from government, as I said, and it has been improving and we thank the government. It could become better, but we know we're competing with other sectors. We're coming out of COVID yeah. and all these things are going on. But it's about probably more support, but also having the right infrastructure. And this infrastructure is both human and physical. So do we have the right coaches who are trained, who know what they're doing? Yes. Do we then have the right facility? Like you facilities, guys have an excellent facility here. Yes. So you need facilities. So we need sport facilities as well. And these sports facilities need to be across. Now, once you have the facilities, you have the athletes, then the next question is, do you have the actual human resource yes. to fine tune these athletes and yes. that's what we are seeing with some we have a good facility coming up in Capchora right. and we should invite you there it's 3,000 almost 3,500 feet above sea level yes. very beautiful that's where those long distance gentlemen train from yes yeah that is a beautiful thing because Uganda has been known to produce the finest long distance runners in, correct in, in the world not even just the country but in the world correct. but we do have a rising star coming up and that is Tassi Sorogot and he did qualify for the semi-finals for the 200 meters the first yes. sprinter since 1997 Quite he, a wasn't, while. he wasn't even born then <laughs> <laughs> Correct. The first since 1997, and uh, at the time in 1997, it was Davis Kamoga who yes. did represent Uganda at Athens. And also in the Commonwealth Games. And also but in the did, Commonwealth did well, Games, yes. exactly. And again, that is part of what we are saying, Apollo, that yes, we're pretty excited that uh, we are taking a slightly um, uh, deeper team in terms yes. of not just the long distance, middle to long distance, not only 1,500, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 10, yes. in the marathon. Yes. But also, we, we, we have the not only do we have Erebot, but we also have Halima yes. and Winnie. Yes. And uh, she is, uh, Halima is the defending champion. Yes. So we, we wish her all the best. So we also like to see more emphasis on, on the, those, on, on those the sprints, shorter races, yes. but also on the field events. So like, I'm sure we have a lot of talent in javelin. We used to have Justin Arop a yes. long time ago. So javelin, short, short put, put, long jump, we have a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But again, this all goes back to having the right support. If we had more support, which is coming, yes. then I'm sure we're going to begin seeing that uh, in Uganda will be well represented in most of these disciplines. Yes. Look at what happened in rugby, where Africa champions. Yes. In uh, Africa, netball is ranked, uh, mm -hmm. I think, number three. Yes. Uh, in uh, cricket, we're doing quite well. In, in swimming, we, uh, on the African continent, we're also on the rise. We, we're yet to break through now to the international level. Yes. And uh, very many, boxing is also one of, we have a, a big tradition in what we yes, do. Yes, we do. In terms of, of, of our area. So definitely Uganda is one of those countries where uh, things are happening. And I'm sure that uh, with the continued support that we're getting from government and other stakeholders, it can only get better. All right. I have noted that support is definitely absolutely very important in this equation. We have gotten from government. We have also just the you know f citizens of Uganda as well. Correct. But what about foreign support? Are we receiving any foreign support? Foreign. That's a nice way you're putting it, Apollo. Yes, foreign support. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, we we do in terms of. Um, like at the Olympic Committee, we receive substantial support from the International Olympic Committee yes. for different things, technical courses for coaches, team support grants to prepare some of the teams, some subsidies, for example, for the teams to go to the Olympic Games, yes. or even if it's the Commonwealth Games, was a £25,000 uh, contribution to help us uh, move, uh, prepare the teams. But also, we are increasingly engaging with the private sector. Oh, right. Because in many countries, the private sector is the backbone of the sporting industry. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of not only supporting sports, but things like having, you know, brand ambassadors, uh, endorsements. Most of these athletes, even in the States and other jurisdictions, will earn more money from the endorsements that's true. rather than the prize money. Yes. And I think that's another area which we should clarify to, our, mm -hmm. to the, the viewers on the, of CTV that for winning in Oregon, they actually win prize money. Oh, 
right. At the Olympics, they don't have the Commonwealth Games. But they at, do not. No, they don't. Why is that so? That's the tradition of the games. In terms okay. of the idea, was not so much monetary, it but was the endeavor spiritual of spiritual sport. sportsmanship. Yes. All oh, right. So you kind of get in for the kind of the joy of effort and and, and, and participation, okay. and not so much for the reward. All oh, right. So you'd pro in, the, in, the, in the early days, they used to get a, like a kind of uh, oh the the, the uh, like the vine on the head. Correct. Yes. So you find that they, they would have that, and but what we're also trying to do in-house or in-country is have a national reward scheme right. where we're saying that we build into our policy that anybody who brings glory to, because the, His Excellency the President made an offer, a presidential offer of five million for gold, three million for silver, yes. a million for bronze, for those who win at, at World and Olympics and Commonwealth Games. Yes. So uh, what just happened that the other day, they should, be, they should be able to get onto that. that, oh. that uh, that uh, that uh, scheme, right. but we'd like to see it more kind of anchored in policy, where we said our athletes are adequately rewarded, because there's also this question, Apollo, of how do our athletes prepare for life after, after. sport? Yes, yeah, so after different they sports, yeah, After they retire, we have seen a lot of greats and legends, you know, fall off like Dokas and Zikuru, and people okay. are asking questions. Where is she? How, She's around. She actually works her. with 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 uh, with uh, with the government. Mm -hmm. His Excellency gave her a job. She's doing quite well. Yes, but Dokas is a good example. She was yes. one of the leading stars in the three three thousand steeple chest. That's on true. The, in the inaugural mm -hmm. uh, introduction of that event, she missed out on going to the Olympics, but she's a Commonwealth legend. Yes. And, and, and it's, it's one of those things that we are trying also to talk about in the sports space. How do we ensure that uh, we have programs, support systems to ensure that our athletes after, even things like how do you manage success, Apollo? If yes. you may win a lot of money, and we've seen very many sports people across the world, you know, boom to bust, or you sort of make money, but you don't have the requisite skills, requisite support to ensure that you invest your money wisely and That's true. live a life afterwards. Some have been very successful, Jordan, LeBron in the, in the basketball area, yes. CR7 in football, Tiger Woods. Mm -hmm. So some of the people have been able to transcend and say, okay, yes, you, you manage your sports career, but manage the sports business side of it. Yes. Is also another thing. And in Uganda, we also get, we have these programs at the Olympic Committee. It's called the Dual Pathway Program, oh, wow. where we train you how to present yourself there's a bit of financial management, oh, but wow. we need to do this more in terms True. of how do you manage success, because yes. success needs to be managed. Exactly, and again, it goes back to mindset because people think it's all about just go do the sport and that is it, go home. No, and no, it no. is there's a much whole more. business there's, entity there's a whole, of in, its in, own. And, and in fact, that's one thing. Correct, yes. Apollo. Many people say what one of the things we are striving to do is to demonstrate to different, especially policymakers, yes. that sport is not just sport. There's a value system. First of all, it is a over an $800 billion industry. Yes. And many people are involved in the sporting sector. So let's take the athlete. There will be the manager, the physiotherapist, the nutritionist, people, uh, say investment manager, mm -hmm. the accountant, the doctors, people manage the stadium. So the value system in sports is quite large. Yes. And every, the media plays, and we like what you're doing. You play an yes. important role. So. It's not just the athlete, but the whole ecosystem. Sports thrives on media, and we're very happy to see media is taking an in yes. increasing central role in beaming, because a lot of the, the, the resources we receive for sports in the, let's say, the International Olympic Committee system yes. come from broadcast rights. Yes. So they pay a lot of money. So, yes, we need to be able to, to see how we can transition, but also manage, get our, our athletes. For example, you could have been, or I could have been uh, an a young athlete, yes. you make, you get some prize money, maybe you invest in a club or you invest in you know, real estate or whatever. But then you could also transition after your career into management yes. as a sports administrator, as an owner of a, of a club, an owner of a franchise. So there are many things in this value chain that can be uh, harnessed. And I think slowly in Africa and in Uganda in particular, people have been to realize that sport is not just recreational, mm -hmm. but it's a professional endeavor. We pay taxes. I think we're, we're trying to do a research right now, Apollo, and I think so far we have in excess of close to 4,000 people employed in sports. 4,000. And I think it can rise. Yes. If we, got the proper, if we get the proper statistics, mm -hmm. whether it's the PE teachers, the coaches, the administrators, yes. the athletes, it's quite a big number. Yes. Yeah. 
Let's talk about the Commonwealth Games that are going to be taking place in Birmingham starting on the 28th of July. Oh, that's the opening ceremony. Yes, that's yes. the opening ceremony. What is Uganda's participation in it? Uh, Uganda's participation, first of all, it's uh, the Commonwealth Games is one of those sporting championships that brings together uh, members of the Commonwealth. Yes. And uh, we, again, it's one of those multiple sport courts we talked about earlier. And Uganda has had a long history. I think if I take the last two editions, yes, we were in Glasgow in 2014. Okay. Uh, we were then in Gold Coast in 2018. Glasgow, we had five medals in uh, Gold Coast six. Yes. Now this time round, we are going to Birmingham. Already, our advanced team is in place. Yes. They arrived yesterday. They are attending a number of meetings. Yes. And uh, the bulk of the teams will begin leaving next week. Okay. We have close to 11 disciplines, All right. athletics, mm -hmm. aquatics, which is swimming, cycling, table tennis, boxing, but, mm -hmm. uh, badminton, Newton, yes. uh, weightlifting, wrestling, are uh, part of that enterprise. Yes. Squash, yes. and then in the team sport we have netball, mm -hmm. rugby, and then para. Because again, one of the issues with Commonwealth and Olympics, we have the para side, which is not always talked about quite the, a lot. Yes, the para, para is people with physical dis disability. Yes. So we have three para athletes who have qualified mm -hmm. to, to go and, uh, in para powerlifting, para swimming, and para athletics. Oh, wow. So total, we have about 83 athletes who have qualified. Okay. And His Excellency the President and the First Lady flagged us off the other Monday, I think on the 14th. And yes, so all systems are go. We have had a national organizing committee chaired by the Honorable Minister of State, Honorable Hamsun Aboa, together with a number of stakeholders. And we are looking to presenting Team Uganda come the 28th when it's the opening ceremony all the yes. way to the 8th of August. Yes. And we look forward to Uganda. I hope you guys will be tuning in. Absolutely. I know, I know that CTV might be in Birmingham. From, yes, yes, we are from, definitely from, going from to what, be in Birmingham. You'll be for their live. Whatever. I don't know whether you'll be there. I it'll won't be. be. I will be corresponding from no, over here. No, we need here. you in Birmingham. I think we should, uh, we should swap you for Clive. You're, Absolutely. You're, you're much better looking than Clive anyway. So uh, we can we can definitely do But so we have yes. those 11 sport courts mm -hmm. and... Uh, then about those 83 athletes oh, right. taking, taking part. And it will also be Uganda's 16th appearance at the Games. That yeah, is huge yeah, and that no, is yeah. absolutely amazing. Definitely goes to show how much effort is being put Correct. into, you know, growing sports in the country. So before I let you go, what are your parting shots to the viewer? I think my, my parting shots, first of all, is to thank you and the CTV management for giving us the space and time to talk about sports. It's something yes. I'm passionate about. But also I'd like to ask all Ugandans to get behind Team Uganda at the Commonwealth Games. Yes. Also on, on, in the ongoing World Championships. We have also other teams. Rugby has just come back from Normandy and many others. But it would be good that we all get behind uh, Team Uganda. So let's focus on what's happening this yes. week in, in Eugene for athletics specifically, but also for the Commonwealth Games, the Islamic Games. We'd like uh, also to thank the media, let's keep on amplifying it, ask all the different stakeholders to keep, keep the faith, hold the line, and keep supporting sport. Because we believe that if all of us, whether it's the federations, you know, having a purposeful program for our sports, the national associations, our partners, the corporate side, you guys, yes. uh, the government, the UOC, all of us should work together because I believe Uganda has the youngest population, one of the youngest populations in the world. Yes, it does. And not only young, but immensely talented, Apollo, immensely very talented. True, and I think if we get continue to get our act together based on a kind of common strategic plan with a common vision of where we want to go, sport in Uganda or sport made in Uganda can only get better. Yes. Yeah, so that would be my parting shot. Let's get behind sport. Exactly. And we'd like, we look forward to seeing you in Birmingham. And Absolutely. We'll swap you out for Clive. <laughs> yes, so. Clive, have you heard? Yeah, Clive has been benched. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, we thank you We can bench so Clive, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. And there you have it. I was joined by Dr. Rukare Donald and he's the president of the Uganda Olympics Committee here in Uganda. And there you have it. Please keep watching CTV and we'll be bringing you all the updates of all the events that are happening at the World Athletics Championships. And that will be going on all the way until the 24th of July. And then on the 28th of July, we'll be showing you the Commonwealth Games taking place in Birmingham 2022. Get behind sport, all right? And let us continue
continue to show so much love and support to our countrymen and women who are representing us in, on an international level. And that is all I had for you in this segment of uh, the Twitter jabs. But keep watching Sunrise at Sea because coming up is our wellness segment. And today, Agnes will be sitting down with the doctor to talk about high blood pressure, the effects, the symptoms, the causes, and the treatments. Stay tuned. This is Sunrise at Sea.